All right, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, aka the Lone Wolf, checking in once again with another episode of Sake Sundays. Glad to be sponsored by Sake's High and God's Favorite Jewels. Feel me today? I got on a little piece of Tiger's Eye, and this is Arrow. We in here. And then for our guest today, we have somebody from the same part of the map as me. You feel me? Ohio stand up. Shout out to the homie. Yes, sir. Remember who you are. I go by Will the Space Kid. I'm from Ohio. Let's get it. Oh, what you do, bro? What I do? Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit of a creator, but mainly a music artist. Music um, artist? Music artist, for sure. Big bet, big bet. What part of Ohio are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio, the 216. Shout out to Lynn. Yeah. Oh. So, before we get into this, the All right. Well, this right here is a little patchouli. Get the air right real quick. And a little bit of sage real quick. Yeah, bro, this heat at work. All right, just one, two, one, two. Get the ambiance. That's enough. And push that to the side. All right, bro, so you said you're a musical artist, so tell us a little bit about your journey. How'd you, you know, get into music and your first steps in making your first song? Got you. Okay. Uh, I really got into music. I saw, I saw Jay Z on TV. Yeah. Um, H to the Izzo video. <laughs> I thought it was incredible. I'm like, how old were you? Um, I had to be super young. Like, I think I was like, I, I might have been like five or yeah, like, bro, five or like seven, seven at most probably. No, I remember the song when it dropped that summer. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was super young, but it was like I don't know. I seen. This black person, super cool. Anybody that ever watched the video, it's like a whole parade, super dope. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I said, I'm like five or seven, whatever. I'm like, I don't even know what he does. Like, right, right. But, but he whatever like he, he does, I, I want to do what he does. Yeah. Like, like that's that's fly. You got all these people cheering him on. Um, and he rhyming words together. So that made me really want to get into music some type of way. Um, middle school was rhyming. And then did you like battle and stuff when you were growing up? Yeah, actually, yeah. So middle school we had like we had rap battles, but then I was also like making songs and stuff too. Yeah. So did you like battling or did you prefer to make songs? Um I like battling. Mm, I don't know. It was always kind of like I don't know if corny the right word, but it's like I, I don't know, I always kind of knew it wasn't it. Yeah. Like, like I would do it, I mean, it'd be fun, and then, you know, like, you get your wins in or whatever, uh, recognition, re recognition, but it was always kind of just like, I don't know, it's just a moment that, like, fades away. Like, nobody's, Right, remember well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's battle. very rare. It's very yeah. rare, but like, like, you gotta spit a fire ass freestyle and like you gotta clown somebody real hard or like it gotta be yeah. a special moment for somebody to remember your freestyle bars for for forever. But yeah. if you spit a song like that song, could yeah, the song time. can catch people. It can really touch people. It can make people, um, you know, feel better about themselves. Whatever your goal is with the song, just I don't know. I always kind of knew like, yeah, this ain't really it. And then I just kind of like, I stopped that. Like, well, well, your first time rapping, was it a battle or was it you sh like decided no. to write? Was it a freestyle? No, my, um, I was already, I was freestyling like in school, like middle school. Like, I don't know, I guess it was like already rappers there. And then I had just like transferred to a school. And then I just was like, people were doing it. And I was like, I don't know, maybe I could do that. Yeah. I think that's what every kid thinks like, oh, maybe I could do that. And then... No, nah, I didn't think about rapping at all. Somebody told me to rap. You didn't think about rapping at all? No. Mm. The first time I rapped, somebody said, freestyle battle. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, come here, nigga. You two battle right now. Rap. Oh, yeah, that's wild. That was the first time I ever... Yeah, that's and wild. after that, I was a kid still, so I was like, maybe I can't do this. I could be a rapper. But before that, no, never even thought about it. You ain't never... Like, not even, like, I don't know, like, in a serious way, but, like... I don't know. I guess it kind of also depends on the environment you were in. So, like, I think I was in an environment where it was tons of people, like, trying to rap. Yeah. 
and then it's going to always be like a community that decides right. like, these are the good people. Yeah. So I think I was in that community where like that's what the community was. Is it, I was a part of that community once it started building, but it all centered around the nigga who told me to rap and other people who were just as close to me at first. Okay. And so for like the first two, three years, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Same as you. I transferred schools. Okay. And so when I transferred schools, you know, you meet new people and everything. And I was, I was a bookworm, man. I read all the time. Okay. And so I transferred to a school in Cleveland. It's, I was like, ah, niggas is pounding, niggas, niggas is on people's heads, bro. Like, I'm just in the corner. And so I went to my grandma's house one weekend, mm -hmm. and that's what my cousin said, right? And so I wrote the words down, and I brought them to school, like, yeah, I'm a rapper. And okay. so that was my, like, oh, he's cool. And everybody else that I was friends with, we all started rapping. But okay. outside of that, it was, like, my cousins that became the community gotcha. where it was, like, because we didn't, it was just three, four of us, bro. So we just showed yeah. us four. And we was in, like, fourth grade. So it was, like, we yeah, were trying I mean. to get like, roasted. It was kind of, like, yeah, between, yeah, between my fifth to eighth grade, it just, it got more and more serious. Yeah. More and more people just, like, believing in it, telling me, like, yeah, you got to do this. Um, And I had a lot of opportunities, like, I was already kind of like uh, performing wherever I can get in, whether it was like a, um, like a uh, like a skating ring, whatever, wherever they said I could perform. I was like, oh man, they let me perform. It's yeah. gonna be so cool. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. I think middle school was like a good foundation of just getting started with music. Oh, when did you record your first song? Uh, I recorded my first song. Eighth grade, okay. yeah, I think eighth, yeah, eighth grade. I recorded my first song. Yes, what um, about shoot, it was just about just me lying, and I, <laughs> I was, it was like, yeah, I was a beast. I was a beast. Hundred thousand dollars on it. Yeah, so <laughs> basically, so first off, I'm from Cleveland, so right. that was the culture. Like everybody, we had to look up to. They were just great liars. Who who are your favorite like Ohio? Okay, okay. Rappers? So you got uh Corey Bapes. Yep. Um, he was really, really popping, super cool. He was a part of that like cap rap movement. For people that don't know, cap rap is like it's when you tell a lot of lies in your rap, but you even but you're not even gonna argue with the audience of whether or not it's a lie. Like they already know that it's a lie, but it just sounds so good that it's like that's what it is. It's cap rap. That's the style of rap. So he was one of the big people. Um, Chip the Ripper, or Chip some people, some people know him as King Chip right Bro, now. Ain't that crazy? People don't even know who Chip the Ripper is. So but they know King Rip or King Chip. Yeah. So <laughs> Chip the Ripper was super good at that time. Um, What's your favorite Chip the Rip song? Uh, it might be Catch the Beat. Oh, for real? That's so chill. No, it's cool. No, no, Dedrick. No, 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 I'm fitted. Oh, I'm you know what? Bro, I'm, I'm fitted with that song today. So I think, it, but it's funny because it's like, when you're a kid, I don't know, some stuff like that seemed like impossible. Like, are oh, these the big rappers in the city? You know what I mean? You no, know, I hear you. The one yeah. thing that put it into perspective for me, though, my cousin went to high school with Chip the Ripper. And okay. so around the time I started playing his music, she was like, you know, Charles. I was like, I am <laughs> Charles. Like, what? And she was like, Chip. And I was like, why are you saying it like that? She's like, because that ain't his name. And I was like, why are you saying it like that? She's like, because I know him. And I was like, my cousin knows Chip the Ripper? Yeah. All right, bet. If she could know Chip the Ripper, I could be a Chip the Ripper. <laughs> okay. that's, a, that's a good way to look at it, for sure. For sure. But yeah, that's um. But yeah, those those are probably the three big people. Like, I feel like during that time, of course, uh, yeah, Chip the Ripper, Corey Bates, and Fat Al. I feel like Fat Al, bro. I didn't hear as much as Fat Al as I expected. I thought he was next on, bro. I knew he was about to be, you feel me, everywhere. It'd still be on to this day. You feel me? Like, I just remember when uh, Coming Down dropped, bro, and everybody was singing it at school. I went to my, uh, where I was actually born, my hometown. Everybody knew it there. But nobody knew who Fat Al was, but they knew the song. That's the craziest thing. Before the internet, for real, you feel me? Like, mixtapes and people had it on their iPod, like. I mean, sometimes, I mean, we've seen it. Your music could definitely become bigger than you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've seen it with other artists. Like, I think OT Genesis music is bigger than him. I hear that. Um, I think it's a couple people. Like, I just feel like their music is way bigger 
I don't know, a lot of those like uh, you know, dance songs, I think those people like mm-hmm. the music got big, bigger No, for sure, bro. Like I don't I don't know who made uh Whip Nene, but I mean I'm pretty sure he's a solid dude, but yeah, the music the music is bigger than him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like him as an example just speaks to the music that was fun mm-hmm. and like made to capture a moment. It was made to capture a moment on purpose, you feel me? And that's like part of I feel like why it might not feel as memorable in the like um, lineup of songs that are important. I think stuff happens. Like, I mean, granted, I don't know the background story if it was like we gonna make a dance song. But I I, I didn't see people like they just make a lot of songs and it just happen to be like that's what they want to push. Yeah. So for a lot of people that just happens. Like it's not even like planned, like, oh yeah, this crazy moment. Nowadays, it's kind of different, too. That's another thing, too. Music was made a lot different, like, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. So, Oh, for sure. But actually, I got a little off topic. What was, what was some of the lies in that first song? You said you was cap rapping, but what were you talking about? What's the name of it? Um, so I usually just take other people's beats, really. So that's kind of like how I started. Um, I didn't, yeah, I ain't know anybody that made beats, but I knew, like, go on YouTube convert to mp3 and then just use the beats and then i remember like man i put some stuff like on um, thing like myspace like yes it was it was some soldier boy beats i'm using the soldier boy beats or whatever and um yeah just rap about anything cars jewelry um shoot this is a whole bunch of stuff i ain't had dope <laughs> um and then it was kind of like, um, I think I had a lot of people like pull me to the side. And it's crazy because I'm keeping my, I'm like still young. Like this is still like eighth grade, like eight, seventh graders, right? But they just kind of like, I don't like it. Like there's like different grown people I knew or whatever. And I was like, why y'all don't like it? <laughs> and they was just like, because it's, cause it's not real. Right. Granted, it was kind of contradicting because they still listen to the same other people. Right. But I guess, like, they had that opportunity to kind of just, like, tell me personally and have nothing to lose. So, that's like, yeah, I just, I don't like it. I can't listen to something that's not real. Um, How do you feel how that affected your music going forward? Um, That definitely affected my music. Because some people, like, broke it down, like, which is still debatable, but... Some people think a lot of the music didn't really make it like main mainstream, I guess, out of Ohio because it wasn't real. Right. Uh, but I think in general for me, once some people told me like, your music need to be real, I, I think that just stuck with me like, okay, the coolest people, they telling a real story. And that's what's like making them dope. Like, um, I guess like, I don't know, like people like Kanye West or... Childish. Yeah, Childish, Childish Gambino. Mac Miller. Mac Miller, definitely. Uh, he's like a great example of just making That's his story true. sound like the coolest story ever. Earl more like... I would say he make his shit sound the coolest ever. He make it sound... He make it sound cool. Yeah. You feel me? His, the way he breaks it down. But no, nah, I hear what you're saying. Like, they yeah. make the lifestyle cool. Like, yeah. Drake is actually a good example too, bro. Because it's like... I was listening to uh, Wayne talk about Drake and when he met Drake. And he was like, bro his music was just as hard as all of our songs and he ain't talking about none of the same topics when it came to like you feel me trapping guns and shooting and stuff like that he wasn't talking street violence yeah yeah. but he was still making slappers so definitely definitely oh what do you feel about drake is on your list top 10 oh he i think he he's higher on my list than most people i think Uh, so drake is the third best rapper ever I, Ever, I, I stand on that. Mountain. Who's the first two? Oh, it's it's Jay Z and Wayne, and I have a huge understanding of why people can't see Jay Z, but Wayne, we we shouldn't even have a. Why life. is the argument? Why do you think Jay Z that like, people give the argument about Jay Z not being a goat? Um, it's just it's such a gap of time. I I think that like that's the first problem. Like what, between people voting now and like the pool of rappers they put him against. Um, it's like he's been there so long. Yeah. And it's so much time with Jay-Z that then passed that 
first off, it's a lot of people they might have not lived in that moment. Right. Like if you was born in two thousand, it's I it get it. I, I get it. I don't say the end, but like I wouldn't even say the away. end. Like he shot his fade away. It just. Well, certain certain, anyway, shit, like, certain stuff not really hitting because if you was born in two thousand and let's say the black album dropped in two thousand three, you were three right, years old. Right. Even bigger hits that might have came out like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, American Gangster stuff. Yeah. You're eight years old. Yeah. So, but I was even a teenager and American Gangster still hit for me different listening to it now than it did when it dropped. Yeah. So, and it's the tonality of Jay Z. I think. Um, do you think people just don't understand why he's considered a great rapper because they don't understand like the mechanics of him being the artist he is? Yeah, it's a lot with Jay Z. I think it's the lyrics going over people's heads. Over people's heads. I think um he never really had too many like uh switches. So like the thing with like Wayne and Drake, I think they were very, very good at adjusting to the time of a different tone of rapping. And Jay Z was just like, This is how I rap. The thing and, is, the Jay, the, what you said about him having his pull of time, my bad. I did ask you your opinion. Yeah. And I can agree with what you're saying. And it's just, I was listening to his first album uh-huh. the other day. Yeah. And he was switching it, bro. It was just all his switches happen. It's kind of like with Drake now. If you hear a Drake song, yeah. you know it's Drake because he sounds like Drake. Yeah. But if you play a Drake song from Take Care in every album up until now, you'll find two or three that might not sound like the same person because he was adjusting. Okay. If you do that with Jay Z, it's the same thing. It's just he became so he became Drake so long ago, yeah. That his style just still has not gone out of style actually because nobody does what he does. Definitely. That's why he doesn't feel the need to switch it now because people still can't do what he's doing now, and he's been doing it for twenty years. And who's caught on yet? Yeah, but yeah, overall, to really answer that question, like I said, I, I give Drake number three, number three on my list. All right. Uh-huh. It's interesting. I feel like so many people, because I'll put him on a top 10. I can't indefinitely just say Drake number three. I even, I don't know, bro. I struggle putting Wayne as top three. Yeah. And Wayne's one of my favorite rappers. That's it's a Wayne, M, and J, bro. And, and then I'll it just fight be, for first place. For it be depending you. on, too, like what you're looking for. So it's like, yeah. it's, it's a whole different battle. Wayne gives you both. That's the reason I can understand Wayne being up there. Yeah. He'll give you both introspective, bars, party. Yeah, man did everything. Um, oh, and another thing, too. That gap is really crucial between them. Like, it's not like Drake is right next to Wayne. It's like the gap is like... Yeah, it, it, it's very, very far. Very, very far. No, he has too much work. His body of work is just crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. And just like looking at the industry... He literally said, it's a bunch of me's. I can't even say too much, bro. I got dreads. You feel me? It's like, Wayne was my favorite rapper all through middle and high school. I graduated high school, and now I got dreads and tattoos, too. Ain't nothing going on my face. I promise you. <laughs> I love you, Weezy, but I ain't that inspired. No, no diss against it. It's just, yeah, like, man. you feel me? Definitely. Well, I don't want to be you. Yeah, I want to <laughs> be like you. You feel me? Uh, who do you think that people would say your music reminds them of? Uh, my music, my music. Uh, I'd say probably like I think I'd name three people. Um, I say Meek Mill, Big Sean, and Kanye. I think those are three people. Um, cause the music is real. I feel like um, I get my point across. Just you know, telling like my life and where it's at. I do like a lot of hype beats. But then I also have my different like stages or just variations of me or creativity. I feel like that's kind of like what you know Kanye got. But I, I think I think it's those three people. Uh, and then Big Sean just being from like the Midwest, and you can kind of really see that in his different songs and him just like progressing. But I, I say those three people. I oh, for sure. Oh, we haven't taken one shot yet. Oh man. I finally found out what it means when you tap the glass on the table. Mm. What they tell you? Actually, the other night, that event we was at, yeah. it was this Russian? Okay. Russian or Roman? Romanian? Okay. Russian or Romanian dude? Can't remember. I know right. they're not the same. Right. Uh, part of the reason I can't remember the dude was talking so fast with such a thick accent, my G. And okay. then he started talking about Gucci and Italian companies. Right. Romans was, it was interesting. Long story short, 
he was telling me about his company and his business, and then we took a drink together, and uh, he tapped his glass, and I was like, what's that for? And he was like, you do it when you take a drink or a shot with somebody. And I was like, I, I know that much, but I've done it, but what's it mean? And dude was like, if you do it or bad sex. Like, if you don't bang the glass on the table, that means you're not going to bang. All right. I was like, oh. <laughs> It's so simple, actually. I mean, I wonder who decided that was the rule, but I'll bang the table, sure. I ain't never look it up, but I almost, I almost will bet it's probably seven different things. And, <laughs> and, if, and if that's one of them, and maybe that could be the one Russian one or whatever, you he know, was, yeah. you know, he was. It'd be interesting to see what the other six is like. Oh, for sure. Cause I feel like that's how the world works. Somebody will tell you. This how they do things in Asia, Russia, whatever. And then somebody tell you, like, well, this how you do it in America. This the right way. So it's like, I'm just, I'll be curious about stuff like that. Well, no, it's because I've done it so many places with so many different people. It's like, it could be rich white girls, random Asian people at a bar. Like, my niggas, like, hey, hey. I'm like, bro, but why is we doing it? <laughs> like, nobody's ever been able to tell me why other than it's what you do or it's bad or bad <laughs> luck. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna do it to appease you, bro. But like, <laughs> no, for so sure. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of things are like that. We just follow. Because even with music, bro, it's like you see the example. I don't say you, but like people see an example of what music is or like what mm. an artist is doing, okay. and then they try to emulate that before they figure out what it is they want to make and why. Yeah, music is a music is so interesting. Once you really get deeper into music and understand what's going on. Um, and it's crazy. A lot of people just gonna live life without ever going over the surface of what music is. Break it down for them. Break it down. Um, uh, music is music is smoke and mirrors, man. Like a lot of stuff is like uh, scheduled. A lot of stuff is fake. Um, and a lot of people are following a story that's created by people, uh, or an exaggeration of people. So it's like when you see stuff that so-and-so broke up with so-and-so or so-and-so is, um, they was, they set this person, I don't know, chain on fire, their girlfriend or whatever. A lot of that stuff is fake. Um, it get ran through a lot of blogs. The blogs post it. Therefore, it's true. Yeah. And then a lot of people just follow the story. For sure. Yeah, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors in music. But let's say the truth is what you're told, you feel me? What you told and what you believe. So, <laughs> what you told and what you believe. That's history it. is his story. Uh, don't make it the true story. <laughs> but no, nah, that's exactly why I feel like uh, being, uh, being poignant and like intentional, being intentional with the music is becoming more and more important because. Definitely. It's like we were just saying Jay-Z is one of the first artists that we both saw and mm. was like, this guy's dope. And one of the first things I remember is seeing him build wells in Africa for children and stuff. You feel me? Yeah. And so it's like, I haven't really seen any big campaign of any big artists doing anything like that. Not to say they're not giving back or anything, but it's like, even with what Jay-Z was talking about, it's like, yeah. He was talking about a level of street activity, but even then, the way he talked about it, the glorification of it wasn't the same glorification of it. You feel me? And so, but the music now is like, who is really leaving a lasting impression and imprint that's going to teach you to push in a positive way and strive for more? It's getting money Yeah, um... is one thing, but striving for excellence is something different. I mean, I'm really, I'm really rocking with LaRussell right now. For sure. LaRussell um, dope. I feel like he got a dope message. He's giving us his life. He's telling us, you know, how to how to get to it, how to get to a bag right. without a label. Um, granted, he just got a, you know, a pretty big deal or whatever with um, Live Nation. But he still just show you, like, it's different ways to, you know, to fig figure good. out the music. Yeah. But, yeah, I think he's pretty, uh, you know, positive, good energy. No, that's definitely a solid, solid representative in music right there. But, uh, have you implemented any of the stuff that you've taken off of his pages? Implemented any strategies from the Russell? Uh, 
I think I'm definitely working on it by like uh, the whole like content thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's very important. Like you need as much content as possible nowadays. Yeah. But yeah, I think nowadays you just need as much content as possible. Uh, that's what's going to really get you out there. Um, and it's just like a, um, not to even kind of like stray away from your question, it's kind of crazy where music is at. Like people can't even listen to music no more. Like, oh, you said that? Um, it's different. Like, like if you was trying to make music, like let's say 1990 or even 2006, people actually had to listen to your music. Like, I want to sign this person because I listen to the music. The way people's brains is kind of like functioning right now, that's not what's going on. First thing that happens is if you send an email or let's say you even meet your favorite A&R or executive or whatever, they're like, they might listen to it, but most likely they're kind of like, how many views does it have? And that's how people have to listen now. Like, even if you told your friend, like, man, my first month really going good with music, everybody telling me, great. Nobody cares how many views does it have. No. Um, and that's kind of like the sad thing of like where we're at right now. It's like people can't stray away from that. It's really hard for people to listen to music and then kind of like try to not look at the other variables, the analytics of the music. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's sad to see, especially when like there's so much music on the internet. Which, which is kind of like the problem of where music is at right now. Like, I think that's what keep happening. You keep, you got these ARs. They looking through TikTok all day. Somebody is trending. Um, they made they have a song, and I, I've heard this out of ARs mouths and stuff. Like they're like, we can't get them to make a third good song. Well, look at what you was listening to in the first place. Like yeah. you was looking at the numbers and not the actual like music. And we seen that most of the time if people do a top ten music people. It's gonna be people probably I don't know before 2015. I think. Oh, the, you think if people pick their top ten artists. Yeah, artists. if people like we was just go around the streets, ask people like, "Hey, give me the top ten rappers of all time." They name all these people before these analytics really took gold. I don't. I don't think that's a that's a mystery. I think they just keep picking these people off of analytics versus the actual music, and then they're just like, "Dang." Why haven't I created a new Tupac at my label? Why haven't I created a new Jay-Z at my label? Maybe you should do what you did prior. I don't know. That's just me. And then part of it also <laughs> just goes down to just saying like how people recreate things. And it was like, once they collect analytics and data, the dude who was in the club talking to us about what the shop thing was for was talking to us about collecting analytics and data for companies to determine what products to push out to people. And so that's exactly what music labels do too and why they go off the numbers because it's like, all right, bet. We don't have to try as hard to get some attention. We just got to figure out what that did and replicate that. And it's easier than letting somebody be themselves. It's less risky if we go off of data and analytics. But like you were saying, Tupac wasn't going off of analytics. He was it going was like, off of soul. Yeah, you Jay-Z to was it. going off of belief of what he knew he could attain. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this happen multiple times. Um you know, it took forever for Eminem to knock the door down. Because, like you said, people copy what it already successful. So they're like, how can we make this what? type of rapper successful? Yeah. We know XYZ works. Yeah. I don't think this is going to work, Dr. Dre. Yeah. And then he kept getting turned down. Well, it's a matter of standing 10 toes sometimes. Right. But with the amount of things that are dropped, that's right. the, another problem because. There's so much music dropped nowadays because of the access. We could record songs on our phone. Uh, he, people are recording songs on their phone, bro. Um, I don't. So, I don't think the access of music is a problem, in my opinion. Um, like I said, I just think the root is like the people picking the music to fun. Well, and I, like, what I mean by it being so much is that the people who are picking it. They have to go through literally a million songs to find a good one. So that's why is like if you had to listen to that many songs every day, bro, over 10,000 songs are released on Spotify and Apple Music. You feel me? That's every day. So in one month, that's 30,000 songs. No human is listening to 30,000 songs in a feasible amount of time. And so it's not to say that the way they're doing it is right. But that's why I say yeah. the access to being able to create a song and release it to the world. Okay. 
has slowed down the actual ability of the people who are trying to find music to find the good stuff. Gotcha. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Oh, they just be like, all right, this one did a lot. This one did a lot. This one did a lot. If we get 10 that did a lot, one of those 10 will actually be good and keep doing a lot. <laughs> ah, we got 10,000 people to pick from. It's way easier than listening to all of these and then doing the same process with the ones we think are good and yeah. still having to go right back to the drawing board. Mm. You feel me? No, that's why we'll bet on the one who already did a little bit themselves. All we got to do is tell them we like them and see where it goes. We don't even have to put as much behind it because they already got a little something started. I mean, it's easier to add to a fire than to start. one. Yeah. And that's really what the problem is. They're trying to add to fires without starting. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really crazy where we at with the music right now. But I would say that leaves freedom to be yourself as long as you're open to doing it. Then that would leave room for more, you know. And then I say, um... I mean, branding is definitely important, too. So that's another thing, too, that take people really far, I feel like. It's just branding in general. No, yeah. And understanding who you're appealing to and how to, like, hit yeah. home with them. Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing of any product. Yeah. Branding is definitely the biggest thing. Yeah, right now, we is yeah, branding and content. That's going to really take you to where you need to go. Or what do you consider your brand to be? Uh, my brand... It's a few things like usually catch me like in the pink. I feel like so the whole pink that basically represent romance and charm. I feel like that's what I typically do typically provide when I enter the room. I'm usually, you know, if it's women in the room, I'm I'm the person that's going to be the vibe, cheer them up. You're going to see them smile at X, Y, Z. Uh, my music, I feel like my music usually it do the same. Like it's charming. Like that's typically what my music is. Um, even if I'm lyrical, it's still like, I still, I feel like I still got that charisma, that charm, kind of like, uh, different people I look up to, like, so my favorite rapper is Cameron. I feel like Cameron got the charm. Like he's, he's lyrical, super swaggy, but he still got the charm though. Swag all that. Um, Mace, another person I really like, like (laughs) it's still that like charisma, like they saucy, they swaggy. Uh, but yeah, that's my brand pretty much. Charm, romance, fly. That's 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 the brand. So I'm here for the ladies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, what we got coming up next from you, bro. Um, I mean, we definitely got more music. Definitely got more shows. I say, uh, my sounds do well on TikTok, so hopefully that that still keep going up. Um. But yeah, just really just striving with the music, uh, doing my best, you know what I mean? And just more more songs. <laughs> we got any scheduled releases? What we said, uh, we're working on some songs right now. I don't really, I don't even want to put no schedule. You know, people get on people's head about that. You said... Well, I'm not saying not dates or nothing, but like, you got uh, a single that you want to drop soon? Like, oh, for me, you just shot a music video, or is there a music video you want to put together soon or anything? No, I think it's more so just... Uh, just re, just record and kind of see like how stuff goes. Yeah. I think that's kind of where I'm at, literally right now. Uh, just the recording process, listen back, um, get around some good energy, good people. They give me some feedback and see where it goes. Big bet, big bet. Um, excited to see what you got coming. We do got that one song together. We could talk about that a little bit after this. And uh, okay, we should get something together, bro. Oh, we definitely get the people some for the one time for the one time. Two one six out here, hey, the, the West hey. Coast. Let them know. Facts, you feel me? Look, we could even let them know. We could take they sound. We do some West Coast vibe. Hey, they me? got some hard beats for you sure. Fit, bro, I already know, man. They I got, sure got some hard beats. man. I, when I first moved out here, I was like, wow, the beats sound so similar. Brett, last year, the beginning of last year, I got a beat from a producer. You might know him, uh, Sneak the Free. His name sound familiar. You've probably seen him on IG. And we, sure I met him through someone we both know. Okay. So that's why I say you might know him. Okay. And uh, it was straight West Coast banger, bro. And so I made that one, and I was like, well, I guess it's time to try a new sound. I'm out here. Oh, okay. uh, it would be dope to get us both on one like that. Oh. No, that's Make it a big vibe. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you for tapping in. We appreciate you. We appreciate Sake High. Go ahead and get you some of uh, Kyoto Japan. 
right here in the U.S. You feel me? Sakehigh.com. Get it ordered to your front door. We out like that. We want to thank Buddha for providing the tea. You know, shout out to our gallery store for providing the Buddha. And God's favorite jewels for providing the ring. I got a little gift for you in the car. I forgot to bring it in. And we're going to rock it like that. Push up. Yeah. And uh, let's do a screenshot of us toasting. Look at the can. Uh, sound like this. Oh. Uh, I'm about to turn these into screenshots. I don't know which one I'm Oh, okay. Got and then.